I only specialize in what I call the really great bubbles. If you go back to 1929 to 2000, uh, to Japan, and, and the housing, the housing part of the housing bubble, and you ask, how did conditions look? Profit margins looked great. The forecast was great. There was no chance of a, of a recession. A few months ago, smart people were saying there was a 20% chance of a recession in three years. I mean, it is quite amazing. And what happens after the bubbles break is there's always a recession pretty quickly. And um, people never get it. People never forecast it. And, and along with the recession comes a drop in profit margins. Going into the bubbles breaking, profit margins are always at a peak. Bubbles don't peak for no reason. They peak because economic conditions are nearly perfect. And that includes low inflation and high profit margins. And uh, the first thing to go in a recession, of course, is the profit margin. And um, that, that is very likely to happen this time. We should be in a recession, mild or severe is the question, but we should be in some sort of recession fairly quickly and profit margins from a real peak have a long way that they can decline. And if you want to get into the longer term, I, I think this kind of 2000 bubble that we have is dangerously likely to morph into the 1970s where inflation is always a part of the background discussion and where growth rate starts to dwindle away. So you have shades of stagflation as we had in the 70s, where commodities are intermittently scarce, price jags here and there, as we have seen recently, where the whole system is so strung out and so borrowed that it's lost its resilience. All you have to do is cough in COVID or a war in the Ukraine, and you see the problems ricocheting around the system that was not designed to absorb any kind of punch. Last minute inventory delivery, you know, no reserves, putting all of your business with one country far away, uh, no flexibility, no resilience. And now we begin to pay the price. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.